we've got a unit here that is not cooling. Um, there's air coming out on the inside of the house. It's not cold. You can see compressor, you know, suction light, not sweating. It doesn't seem like it's running. Um, it is a bit hot. Yeah, hot to touch. You hear that? Yeah, but he's trying to start and he can't. So we're gonna check that capacitor, the 30. Um, so this is a Lennox. The board is not displaying any error codes. Um, and then the other fan water is running, but not the compressor. So we're gonna turn it off and check that capacitor. So hopefully it's an easy fix. So we're gonna check the capacitor. Um, already checked. We it's like the ground. We got no voltage. Um, already bleed off the capacitor with my leads. Um, the meter has a resistor, so bleed it out. And I got it on MFD. We're gonna go ahead and check. And I got 1.0 MFD. Yep, this baby's bad. So I'll let the customer know. Put a new one and look at this contactor. Pretty beat up. So we're gonna tell them about replacing this and we'll clean all that and check the pressures, right? So we got the capacitor installed. The customer wants to change the contactor too. Yeah, it's pretty burnt up. So I'm just gonna clean this while we're here. can't see but this coil is just dirty so I think I'm gonna there's a water spigot right there so I think we're gonna go ahead and clean it up pretty good with chemicals so yeah the capacitor is bubbled up yep that so it's got the new contactor in um, I had to cut the wire and just put it like that that's the only one we carry so but it should be alright everything's tight tied up all the wires the uh, positive wires too how about it? Turn it on, make sure it runs, and I'll clean the condenser. Okay, so we got the compressor running, 13.35. And we got the fan running, 0.85. My lock rotor amps, when it started, it was 23. The limit is 104. Run load amps 21.2. We got 13.47, so we're looking good. And for the fan, we got 0.88. This is an ECM fan motor, so the capacitor is only for the compressor. So for the fan motor, we can run it up to two amps, and we only got 0.67 or 0.68. My bad, 0.87. So. We're looking good. I'm gonna go ahead and get all these panels off, clean it up, so flush the drain line, and we're good to go. So we got the unit taken apart. Pretty bad. So I'm gonna do a little light rinse, and I'm gonna add the chemicals and let it sit. Okay, that's a lot better. Now I just gotta rinse that off. This side right here looking good. Gotta rinse the inside too. Alright guys, so we got the unit going. We got it washed, looking good. So now we're just checking the pressures and those are the pressures I got. <clears throat> uh, it's kind of hot in, inside the house, that's why 145 on the low side. Um, this side of the coil is a bit beat up, um, this right side here, 
so I bet some some of the water is getting stuck in the coil until it dries off that head pressure should start uh, to drop um, and then my sub cool should start to go down okay um, because of the saturation is a bit high liquid saturation um, so once that the unit start getting rid of the water stuck in the coil it should start to get more air and the pressure should start to drop so pretty much the sub cooling value uh, is either four or five it doesn't even matter what tonnage yeah Lennox sometimes is crazy sometimes you can't even get a, a right sub cool you keep adding charge to the unit you can overcharge it so it is in second stage see it says uh, C2 so yeah that is it for this one I'm gonna go ahead and to the attic flush the drain line and we should be good see that sub cool is dropping when I turned the unit on it was 19 sub cool so we just gotta let it dry like I said you know that coil is wet once it start getting enough air then either this temperature goes up or the pressure starts to go down Alright guys, on to the next one.